Hi, my name is Amber Terhune. I'm the health educator for the Johnson County Health Department, and this presentation is regarding lice. So what is lice? The clinical name is Pediculosis capitis. They are tiny parasitic insects that live on human hair. They have special claws to attach to that hair. They feed on human blood and are very common. They do not fly, hop, jump, or burrow under your skin, or carry or spread any disease, so they're not a public or medical health hazard. So where are lice found? They're found on the scalp, behind the ears, in the back of the neck near the hairline, and rarely on eyebrows and eyelashes. As you can see on this slide, we have the life cycle of a head louse. They begin as nits or eggs. They are tiny, oval, yellow or white in color. They are stuck to the hair shaft within a quarter inch of the scalp because they need warmth. They hatch after about one to two weeks and the shell remains attached to the hair after the louse hatches. They then turn into a nymph or a young louse. They are smaller than an adult, tan or gray in color, and typically become an adult after one to two weeks. The adult louse is the size of a sesame seed, has six legs with claws, and is tan or gray in color. They usually live about three to four weeks. The females are larger than the males and lay about six eggs per day. The cycle repeats about every three weeks. For survival, they need a blood supply, and they need that several times a day. Lice can live only up to two days off of the scalp, but not any longer because they need that blood supply. The eggs do not survive without temperature found near the scalp. So how are lice spread? They are spread very easily as they're very contagious, especially in group settings such as schools, child care centers, sleepovers, sports activities, or camps. They are spread through direct contact like head-to-head -head or hair-to-hair -hair, and less frequently through indirect contact, although lice can crawl from the head and you can get it through other people's belongings, such as combs, brushes, towels, hats, headphones, stuffed animals. You can get it from contact with bedding, couches, pillows, the carpet, towels, or items stored together, or also can be transmitted through wigs or hair pieces if worn within 48 hours of someone who is actively infested. It is not spread by pets as human lice does not infest animals. Lice can live underwater for several hours but is unlikely to spread in a swimming pool. So who is at risk for lice? Really anyone, regardless of cleanliness, socioeconomic level, or age, and we should reassure kids that they didn't do anything wrong to get lice. Those who have close contact with infested persons, such as household contacts who are infected, and especially children three to years old and their families, as children are more likely to have close physical contact. It's estimated that six to 12 million infestations occur per year in the United States. Lice is more common in girls and is less common in African Americans in the United States, possibly because the claws may be more adapted to the shape and width of other races' hair. So what are the signs and symptoms of lice? You may have itching as there could be an allergic reaction to the saliva from the bite. It may not itch for weeks and the scratching may lead to an infection. The scalp may be red, have a rash, have bumps or sores. You may feel tickling on your scalp from the lice moving. You could have difficulty sleeping as lice are more active in the dark. Or you may see lice on the scalp or nits on the hair shafts although nits on the hair shafts does not necessarily mean that there's an active infection. So how do you find lice? You can separate wet hair in sections with a fine tooth comb and look for live or moving lice. Look for nits on the hair within a quarter inch from the scalp. If it's further than that from the scalp, it may be from a prior infestation. Do not confuse things easily removed from the head, such as dandruff, hair casts, which are beads of dead hair tissue, dirt, residue from hair products, scab tissue, or other insects. 
As far as treating lice, you should first talk to a healthcare professional, as the medications can be toxic, and you may sometimes treat someone for lice when there is no active infestation. You should always read and follow all instructions, making sure that you check the age restrictions, or note that you may need a second bottle if the hair is very long or thick. There are different options, such as over-the-counter medications, prescription medications, home or natural options, or dehydration. Over-the-counter treatment consists of pediculicides, which kill lice only, not the eggs, and is based on perethrin, which is extracted from the chrysanthemum flower. Permethrin, or Nix, is synthetic pyrethrin. Side effects include redness or itching of the scalp, and it is approved for those two months of age and older. Or there are pyrethrin with additives, such as RID, A200 lice treatment, Pronto, RNC, or triple X. It's pyrethrin combined with another chemical which enhances its toxicity. Side effects include redness or itching of the scalp. You should not use it if allergic to chrysanthemum or ragweed, and it is proved for those two years of age and older. Here we have a list of five prescription medications used in the treatment of lice. First, we have benzyl alcohol or ulesvia. It kills lice by depriving them of oxygen, although it is not ovicidal, meaning it does not kill the eggs. Side effects are redness and itching of the scalp. It is not approved for those less than six months of age, and safety has not been established in those 60 years and older. Next, we have malathion or ovide. It is pediculicidal, meaning that it kills live lice, and partially ovicidal, meaning it kills some eggs. It is applied and rinsed out after 8 to 12 hours, allowing the hair to dry naturally uncovered. It has a high alcohol content, meaning it is flammable. It is approved for those 6 years of age and older, and is contraindicated in those less than 2 years of age. Next is ivermectin lotion, or SCLICE. It is pediculicidal, meaning that it kills live lice, and appears to prevent nymphs from surviving. It is effective with or without combing out the nits. It is approved for those six months of age and older. And you may have a red or itchy scalp as a side effect. Next is spinosad or natroba. It kills live lice and eggs. Nick combing is not required and is approved for those six months of age and older. You may also have a red itchy scalp with this medication as well. Last, we have lindane, which should be considered a last line of treatment. It does kill live, live lice and eggs, but it has a high risk of severe side effects, such as seizures. It is not recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics for children. The FDA warns against using it for those patients weighing less than 110 pounds, those who are pregnant or breastfeeding, those with HIV infection, seizure history, premature infants, or the elderly. Here are some options for natural remedies in the treatment of lice. First, there's white vinegar, which may help to dissolve the nit glue. After applying the white vinegar to the hair, comb hair from scalp to end with a fine tooth comb to remove the lice. Another option is wet combing, as wetting temporarily immobilizes the lice. Adding conditioner makes it easier to comb through the hair. This is a recommended solution for those less than two months of age. Take the fine tooth comb from the scalp to the end of the hair twice on wet conditioned hair every three to four days for three weeks after the last live louse is seen. Another option is essential oils, as small clinical studies have shown there is a possible toxic effect on lice. Some examples include tea tree oil, anise oil, ylang-ylang oil, and neurolidol, which is a chemical compound in many plant oils. It may lead to allergic reactions and it is not FDA regulated or approved. Another option is smothering agents as they deprive lice and eggs of air. Some examples include mayonnaise, olive oil, butter, and petroleum jelly. You apply one of these, cover the scalp with a shower cap, and leave on overnight. One study showed only petroleum jelly was effective, and there's little clinical evidence of any of them working. A less common option for the treatment of lice is dehydration. It is only done at specialized lice clinics of America. Do not try this at home with a regular hair dryer, as it is too hot and could burn the scalp. 
So what should you do after lice treatment? You should change and wash all clothing and linen used by anyone with an active infestation in the last 48 hours in hot water, which is at least 130 degrees Fahrenheit or 54.4 degrees Celsius, as this will kill the lice in the nits. You should then dry the linens on a high heat for at least 20 minutes. You may dry clean any items that are unable to be washed or any items that are unable to be washed or dry cleaned may be sealed in bags for two weeks as this will kill any current lice or other lice that may hatch. You should vacuum carpet, rugs, furniture, and mattresses and throw away the vacuum bag or seal the trash bag that the canister is emptied into. You should soak combs, brushes, headbands, barrettes, etc. in alcohol for one hour or hot soapy water at least 130 degrees Fahrenheit for 5 to 10 minutes or you may also throw those items away. You should also recheck and comb the hair with a fine tooth comb every two to three days for at least two to three weeks. Most lice treatment does not kill the nits or the eggs, so you may need to retreat in seven to 10 days after all eggs have hatched and before the new eggs are produced. All household members should be checked for lice after one person is found to have an infestation. You should check everyone every two to three days after treatment of that person with the lice. You should treat any household members found to have active lice at the same time. Do not treat if they do not have lice or nits, although some experts do recommend treating bedmates. Here are some things not to do while treating for lice. Do not overtreat, as in too much or too often, and you should call the doctor if it is unsuccessful after two attempts. Do not fumigate the house as this can be toxic. Just routine thorough cleaning is all that is needed. Do not use chemicals such as gasoline or kerosene on hair as it can be flammable. And do not use a hair dryer on treated hair as some approved medications may also be flammable. Do not use a conditioner or shampoo conditioner combo before treating as conditioner can be a barrier to over-the-counter or prescription medications. Do not wash your hair or swim for about one to two days after treating. And do not use more than one medication at the same time unless instructed by your physician. So what if the lice will not go away? There could be a reinfestation or the treatment may be ineffective as the lice may be resistant to the medication used. There may have been an improper use of the medication. You should call the doctor if there is no improvement after 12 hours as they may recommend a different option for treatment. So how can lice be prevented? You should avoid head-to-head -head contact. You should not share brushes, combs, hats, scarves, or hair ties with other people. Be sure to hang garments on a separate hook away from others' belongings. Do not lie on bedding, carpets, or furniture recently used by someone with an active infestation. Some over-the-counter products claim prevention, although there is no scientific data. They may be natural products as they're not regulated by the FDA and they may be more expensive. So what is the return to school policy? There are no federal or Indiana state requirements and there are no specific policies in Johnson County. No NIT policies are not recommended by the American Academy of Pediatrics. You should check with the school as each individual school corporation has their own policy. But many schools allow children to return after treatment is completed. Head lice is not reportable to any federal, state, or local agencies, although you should be sure to inform your school, child care center, or parents of playmates so they may alert others and take preventive action. This concludes the lice presentation. If you have any questions, please contact your doctor, school, or local health department. Thank you.